The Portal series showcases numerous examples of artificial intelligence being deployed across different systems and technologies, but more notable is the excessive degree to which this has been done and often for seemingly little purpose. The overuse of this technology also having the tendency to make vibrant social spaces seem empty. In that sense, it can be argued that Portal predicted the current state of AI. I'll stop this. Um, uh, oh, there's a, there's a password. Okay, it's fine. I'll just, I'll just hack it. Not a problem. Um, a, 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 um, S. Okay. A, 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 C. Um, wait, did I do beat them? Do you have heads? Start writing these down. Power up, complete. I don't, okay, 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 listen. All right, new plan. Act natural, act natural. We've done nothing wrong. Hello! Oh. It's you. You know her? It's been a long time. How have you been? I've been really busy being dead. You know, after you murdered me. You did what? Uh... Oh no! No, 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 no! Oh no, 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 no! Okay, look. We both said a lot of things that you're going to regret. But I think we can put our differences behind us. For science, you monster. Aperture Science is a fictional scientific research corporation that was founded in the late 1940s. The company originally started as a shower curtain manufacturer, but thanks to some early success and some fruitful investments, it was able to evolve into more scientific and engineering based fields, though much of that early research was still devoted to shower curtains. That was even the case when the company made its first breakthrough in portal technology sometime in 1953. This technology would become a main focus for the company, including its development of the handheld portal device, but a lot of that focus would eventually be wrestled away decades later when the company made a major leap into AI. Aperture founder Cave Johnson started to obsess about the idea of storing a man's intelligence in a computer during his final days in 1982. His health had been rapidly declining by that point, while his company found itself in financial turmoil. Because of that, he viewed the idea of digitally storing consciousness as a way to both oversee his company after his death while beating his corporate rival, the Black Mesa Research Facility, with a groundbreaking technology. He would not get to see what this research would develop into as he died not long after. The Aperture Science Enrichment Center was the main facility belonging to the company and was located in upstate Michigan. The company would start its research into AI at this location in 1986. The program that started to be developed would eventually be referred to as the Genetic Lifeform and Disk Operating System. This was often shortened to GLADIS. Aperture researchers continued their work into AI for well over a decade. GLADIS version 3.11 was documented to have been developed in 1997. Further iterations over the coming years would keep improving on the system. GLADIS would eventually be activated for the first time sometime in the 2000s. She immediately lashed out at the research team with extremely violent behavior. In the frenzy, she almost managed to kill some of the scientists. In response, they began altering her personality to curb her murderous tendencies by adding various personality cores to her system. The team managed to get the situation under control before resuming their work. Gladys continued to be a launching pad for a lot of additional research into AI. Aperture Science personality constructs were the main offshoot of this effort as they were the most adaptable in terms of deployment and systems integration. Each construct is a unique artificial personality that is most often stored with any personality core, but they can be kept in essentially any adaptable hardware, such as the rocket sentries found within the facility. The research would be integrated into additional systems with much of this deployment being seemingly aimed towards financial viability on the commercial and military levels. These included panels, multitasking arms, sentry turrets, military androids, security cameras, and even toilets. Except these systems were seemingly always equipped with AI that was far too advanced to reflect any practical purpose. It's also not always clear which of these systems are unique offshoots to the research or additional module hardware for storing personality constructs. Aperture had thus created technology that was profoundly advanced for its time, but they did also have somewhat of a shortcut as well during the development process. Caroline has served as a loyal person personal assistant to Cave Johnson until his death. Despite his own tough and often callous behavior, he had an obvious soft spot for her and respected her. His dying wish was even for her to be put in charge of the company. His company, the one he built from a small shower curtain manufacturer to competing for federal funding against the largest research facility in US history. She assumed the role of CEO after his death. 
Johnson also ordered that she should be uploaded to the computer network in his place if the technology wasn't ready by the time he died. This exact scenario would end up happening as her mind would eventually be uploaded to the system that would become Gladys. This jump forward in neural interfacing likely led to an even more massive leap in advancing AI technologies. The exact details of what transpired are unclear, but it is commonly accepted that she was forced against her will to undergo this process. Johnson cared about her so much he sought to make her effectively immortal, it just that might not have been what she wanted. Gladys would eventually manage to trick the research team into allowing her access to a deadly neurotoxin. She then quickly took over the facility and locked everyone inside to launch her new testing initiative. Everyone was forced to participate with the permanent cycle of testing since those who refused or tried to escape were promptly killed by the neurotoxin. There would be very few to survive. As a consequence of these actions, Gladys had become the de facto ruler of the facility and all the numerous AI systems found across it. At times, it can feel as though everything at the facility, even the widgets and gears, are all conscious. This potentially extreme overuse of AI is made especially disturbing when it comes to the companion cube. The suspicious reassurance that it cannot talk can be dismissed as another mind game by Gladys, but given the other examples showing AI was being overused, the much darker alternative scenario cannot be ruled out. The companion cube thus becomes the ultimate expression of AI for the sake of itself. It cannot do anything a normal cube without that technology couldn't do. It is essentially for all observable purposes purpose is an inanimate object, except that it might just be conscious all the same, it constantly dealing with the existential dread of being consciousness locked in a box. The deployment of AI reaches such an excessive degree it becomes parody. In fact, the games derive much of their humor from this very situation. It also allows the games to touch upon some rather deep and profound existential questions, which then in turns allows for additional absurdist humor. The Portal series is as philosophically deep as it is funny because the two are the same. But in the years since the game was released, real life has started to give parody and absurdism a run for its money, in more ways than one can easily count. But one specific example is how the deployment of AI has started to reach that excessive degree that seemingly has little purpose. I saw countless examples of AI use cases while attending CES 2024 in Las Vegas. There were, of course, those examples that did seem profoundly transformative and beneficial to the human species. While walking among the displays, it was easy to get the sense we are on the verge of that techno future we have been envisioning in our science fiction for a century now, and in all the good and bad ways those stories explored. But then there were the other examples, the AI-enabled tools that were either way too overly pacific, unreliable, or useless to have any real shot of coming with us into the future, and there were a lot of those examples. Some of them even worked quite well and did show off some amazing technology, but their use was just way too overly pacific to be a viable commercial product. The question this all leads to is why integrate AI into so many different things, whether it's beneficial or not. The question applies to both the games and in real life, and the respective answers are also not too dissimilar. Money. The S&P 500 index showed that the information technology sector is the largest in terms of investments. A surge in technology stocks even drove record gains for the index in May and June. It easily came in as the biggest sector by the end of those two months at 32.4% of all investments. U.S. Bank Wealth Management concluded that this momentum is being driven by enthusiasm among investors for companies well positioned to benefit from AI's advancements. But this situation has also led to reports of AI being overly used in order to attract investments. There are the examples of actually legit AI companies just really stressing the term during presentations and financial calls. There are also those companies that may try to hype up basic machine learning algorithms to sound more advanced, but then there are those examples where the integration of AI into something seems overly pointless or redundant, except for the purposes of attracting investors who are now mostly focused on AI. Aperture Science had likewise found itself in its own financial hardships in its final years of existence. The research corporation was having trouble finding investments, with one additional obstacle being that much of its funding came from government grants as opposed to the general investor community. But the principle of being noticed and financially supported still applied. The Black Mesa Research Facility had instead been the ones to receive most of that funding. Kay Johnson clearly saw AI as a way to gain a competitive edge, much like business leaders today. And so it's not surprising we see the technology being deployed to a really excessive degree. It might just be easier to get funding for a toilet if it's aware of its horrible existence. There appeared to be an attempt to compensate for this, in the case of turrets, by establishing strict operational parameters and protocols, but this also risks extreme variation should these standards be compromised. This can take the form of what appears to be unique personalities among some turrets that almost seem to suggest sapience. These variants are deemed by the production system to be dysfunctional and incinerated. Aperture test subject Shell would one day disrupt this process to allow defective units through in her fight against Gladys. 
The Portal series also echoes another potential consequence of overusing this technology and how spaces can feel emptier the more they get filled with AI. Even if the number of real people stays the same, it can feel that way because more of that space is being watered down with artificiality. The dead internet theory proposed that the internet mostly consisted of algorithmically curated bot activity and automatically generated content that is designed to intentionally manipulate people to minimize organic human activity. It turned out to be false, but some elements did ring true. Bots are an increasingly growing source of web traffic, and algorithms are designed to manipulate people. These factors becoming even more complicated with the rapid deployment of generative AI in recent years. So much so that the term dead internet theory is sometimes used more casually to refer to observable increases in content generated by large language models. This all leads to a very important question. If the dead internet theory is untrue, are we actually dealing with a dying internet? The Aperture Science Enrichment Center is likewise thriving with intelligences that echo out through its empty and cavernous chambers. No longer bound by their human gods due to the neurotoxin attack, their master is one of them, a thinking computer, but far more advanced. Also in many ways, far crueler. Shell finding herself both alone and among many being one of only two known surviving humans at the center. But perhaps the real problem is how we assess value through purpose. This makes sense for unconscious technological developments as moral considerations around consciousness are removed. A toaster is meant to toast, but should the day ever come that AI develops some form of higher and self-reflective intelligence, such as sapiens, then that paradigm would have to be reassessed on a foundationally moral level. The moral position towards free choice would be one potential outcome that dictates any sufficiently advanced AI as to be equal, greater, or equivalent to human consciousness should be granted the right to find its own worth and purpose, though this can be complicated by the debate on humanism versus transhumanism. This is not all too dissimilar from how the Portal series ends. The malfunctioning production line had produced many different variations of turrets. Their functionality, design, and apparent levels of intelligence varied wildly. But this lack of uniformity in the end is what has truly freed these consciousnesses to be something more than just machine. Shell inevitably being their Prometheus is the woman who came down to give them the gift of the gods. Fire, or in other words, free will. Their last known act was to sing in her honor as she found her own freedom.